Baraton University was the first private university to be chartered in Kenya, having been chartered in 1991. It offers more than 50 academic programs, including BSc Nursing, one of its pillar programs. Because of a period of mismanagement, whose low point is the current administration, Baraton University is facing imminent death. While it's a private university, Baraton offers education, which, as you well know, is a public good. Because of this, it should be subject to the same scrutiny and accountability as, say, a private hospital, such as Nairobi Hospital, for instance. And that's where the media should come in. As U.S. Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandes said over a century ago, sunlight is the best of disinfectants. Without further ado, the following are some reasons Baraton offers an excellent case study in how to kill an institution. The Vice Chancellor of Baraton is one Philip Kimeli Mayo, apparently a professor. If we do an internet search, however, using a platform such as Google Scholar, not more than two of his papers emerge, none of which he appears as the principal contributor. Then again, people who know him right from his village claim he forged his papers. Can the media and CUE confirm the qualifications of Philip Mayo, carefully trace his academic journey right from primary school to professorship and his publications against CUE requirements for a professor? University vice chancellors should be excellent fundraisers. Professor Laban Ayiro, for instance, the Daystar University Vice Chancellor, in 2021 raised an impressive 67.5 million towards the construction of the School of Nursing. On the flip side, Barton University Vice Chancellor has zero fundraising experience or skills and has not brought a single shilling in terms of grants. The Barton University firm for all practical purposes, is dying and dead. The cows that belong to the university are embarrassingly thin and emaciated. Meanwhile, the vice chancellor is keeping his own cows on campus. In a clear case of abuse of power, he has boldly engaged a staff member, Mr. Kosgei, to attend to his very healthy and happy cows. A worker who is on payroll to work for the university, not to attend to the VC's personal businesses. The university administrative board, the body tasked with running the day-to-day -day affairs of the university, is like a family club, something like a charmer. About a third of the membership are spouses. These include the finance officer and the and director of e-learning, the human resource manager and director of quality assurance, the registrar and the director of public relations, while the vice chancellor is also an in-law to the manager of auxiliary enterprises. One wonders whether there can be an accountability and independence in this corporate environment. Unfortunately, the university council is ob obviously complicit. At least half, approximately, of the members of the university administrative board are serving in an acting capacity. Some, such as the human resource manager, have been acting a capacity for about five years. From a good corporate government perspective, prolonged acting appointments are in general an undesirable practice that can be adversely affected the ability of officials involved in discharging their responsibilities impartially. This is especially so, considering these officers are beholden to the vice chancellor, not the university council, for, for the continuation of the acting appointments in political patronage is a key department at Baraton, not competence or qualifications. When students walked out on the wife of the vice chancellor because of her poor teaching, she was appointed to the Quality Assurance Office, the very office that should guide faculty on how to teach.
And because political patronage is the guiding factor in recruitment, Baraton has paid up to 15 million as penalty to carry for certain omissions, omissions that com competent officers should have avoided. Clearly, the way to sink a university is to redeploy staff members anywhere, whether for reward or punishment, regardless of the areas of, spe of specialization or years of practical, hands-on experience. There's no competitive recruitment at Baraton. Vacancies are not announced, even to SDA churches, yet Baraton is a church institution. As a pointer, you can ask about the recruitment of the head of Baraton FM station, as well as monitoring and evaluation evaluation officer at the Department of Quality Assurance, who was appointed to a crucial position that deals with quality, yet has zero university teaching experience. If you want to kill a university or any institu institution for that matter, ensure you make appointments to unqualified crones and henchmen. The University Council knows and has discussed the issue of construction budgets being exceeded by as much as 500%, an occurrence that suggests high-level corruption. Yet to date, no head has rolled. There's a suspicious obsession with fancy gates and other building projects, even when academic institutions the world over because of technological advancements are going slow on brick and mortar. Then again, these construction projects are proceeding in an opaque manner, without any public display of contractor details, as is the standard practice in many institutions. What is the university leadership hiding? Baraton is battling several court cases and some more in the pipeline. Because of a leadership hellbent on witch hunting and fighting petty wars with very junior staff, there's a climate of fear and more era espionage. One court case even involves a private telephone conversation. You can ask about the case of Asar Rotich. The way to kill an institution is to engage a leader who is insecure and who fears even his own shadow. Then again, Baraton is witnessing an unprecedented level of big man syndrome and messiah complex. For instance, the administrative board cannot convene if the vice chancellor is out of campus. Important decisions cannot be taken. We doubt if the vice chancellor has ever gone on leave. A student called Raphael is serving a suspension. His offense is that he's an administrator in a WhatsApp group where a different student posted an insightful message. <clears throat> Never mind that even the committee that had his appeal cleared him of any personal wrongdoing. <clears throat> the vice chancellor must just have his way. What does it take to be a member of a university council? A university council, in our humble opinion, needs people with extensive academic experience and exposure, an excellent mix of skill and proven experience in leadership and management. <clears throat> with all due respect, it is time we asked ourselves if a university can be effectively run and governed in this century by a council where pastors exercise absolute strat strategic leadership. Again, let us honestly ask ourselves if a council member can be impartial if he enjoys employment favors from the vice chancellor. <coughs> but sadly, that's the case of Baraton. <coughs> the appointment of Mrs. Marundu is just a case in point. Because of a sy systemic man mismanagement, quality of learning is, an, is at an all-time low. For instance, whereas nursing graduates from Baraton would pass more than 90% rates in their board exams, today the pass rate is dangerously dancing about around 40%. The, le the leadership of Baraton paid some millions of money, ostensibly 
to compensate squatters <coughs> who had settled on capsulate land. This payment, according to plausible accounts, was unprocedural and went into the pockets of some university officers. To address this argument, around the time of this payment, the university made some suspicious transfers, redeployment to officers who, according to the account we have, were not comfortable approving this particular payment. One of these is Mr. Amos Mule. The then finance officer. Can the media and relevant governance agencies help perform a paper trail of this of this payment? You may think we are writing all these because we are fighting the university or its leadership. Far from it. We can't fight the very hands that feed us. Instead, we are doing this because we love Baraton more probably than even the average worker.